1991, that was the World Cup. I remember it well, that semi-final. Well, we, uh, as I say, we cocked it all up uh, on the technology department, but we welcome him back. And thank you so much for being generous enough to rejoin us, David. Good on you, mate. No, no problem. Thanks for having me again. <laughs> In 1982 to 1996, 101 times you played for the Wallabies, 85 tests. Can I just say before we even start, I was at that test in 1982 uh, at Athletic Park when you goose stepped past Stu Wilson and I was standing right in front of you, mate, and I've never forgiven you for it. I'm sorry. Yeah, well, mate, I was a cocky little Aussie. had no idea what I was doing. Got off the plane in New Zealand and the journalist said, what do you think about Mark and the great Stu Wilson? I said, Stu who? No! Uh, I know. I found out pretty quickly who he was, though. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> <laughs> you, had a, you actually had a bloody good success record against us, didn't you? I mean, compared to a lot of players, how many, I think, you, you tell us, how many times did you play? Yeah, I think I played New Zealand 29 times. I think I won eight. That's not bad. It's not bad it's actually, actually not a bad record. Some people have never beaten the All Blacks. I know. And in actual fact, yeah, but these, this All Black side at the moment is we're discovering and breaking all of those records by ourselves, mate, against Ireland and Argentina and things. You also achieved a couple of things which very few people have, which is winning a World Cup semi-final against us, winning uh, on Eden Park and winning a Test Series and things like that. So, look, we love having you back on. First topic of conversation has got to be about Darcy Swain. What we're hearing is he's yep. been selected in the Australian A squad, which gives the impression that if he gets banned, those matches will be taken up by that and he'll still be available for the end of year tour. Would well, that be sour? Yeah, mate. I, I actually think, you know, we we have a problem in Australia. We're trying to promote the game. You've got rugby league Aussie rules doing really well. Uh, you go out and coach kids and you try and teach them the right way of doing things. And then you get someone like that who, in the England tests, you know, got got red carded for headbutting. And then he goes, I mean, what does the mother say to their son when they say, look at that tackle and go, uh, you're not playing, son. You're not playing because it's dangerous. He came from an off-side position. And he got his leg, and, mate, it was horrible. I don't know why they kept on playing it, but, I mean, yeah, look, I, I would have given him, again, uh, I would have given him six, seven, eight months easily because the player that's he's injured, he's gone basically, he might make the World Cup next year as well, so his career is destroyed as well. David Campisi with us on the platform. So, Cambo, you know, I don't know whether any player deliberately goes out to injure somebody, but players go out there with reckless intent in their brains, and that guy, it just seems to play that he doesn't have a lot of self-control. And so when Dave Rennie turns around and said after the first test, oh, I think he's been a bit hard done by, I just can't believe where Rennie was coming from. Yeah, you know, there's, there's uh, the, the coaches obviously go out there to coach the players to play. And, mate, as I said, you know, if you look at... Um, um, Eric Champ for France. Uh, you look up over the years, there's players, mate, and then every team that are reckless. But, you know, when, when you've done it once and a couple of weeks ago you got red carded and then you do it like, what was he trying to do? The ball, he, he aimed at the guy's leg. I mean, it wasn't like he tried to take him out and he wrapped his arm around it, which made it didn't look good at all. So, as you're saying, some players are just like that. That's just... Mate, I can, I can mention a really good guy called Richard Lowe. Yep. Like, Richard Lowe, doesn't matter what you said to him off the field, on the field, he was Richard Lowe. He'll do whatever he wanted to do. So we can talk about those, and there's always going to be one. And I, I think that, unfortunately, mate, if he gets a really light sentence, it's going to be, it's going to be a lot of outcry around the world because it's, it's just destroyed someone's livelihood. And he's okay, he gets a couple of games and plays again. I mean, it's just not right. I think the max is 10 weeks. But, you know, in all of these situations, I, I mean, you know, they say the max. I'd, I'd, I'd just like them to rewrite the laws and actually just be, you know, upfront, be practical, be honest about it and say, okay, this particular situation, we're viewing it like this. I mean, you wait till you hear his his absolutely army of lawyers that will stand up and talk about his childhood, this, and he's hard done by this, and he didn't mean it, and he's a nice guy, and this and that, and bollocks. You know, so, you know, I, I don't know if anyone disagrees with you. Should the punishments match what happens to the player on the deck? I suppose it's an argument that you can argue all kinds of ways around, but in this particular instance, I think you're right. Yeah, but also I think it's, um, it happened to, um, to Hodge in the World Cup, you know, against Fiji, where he uh, went high on the, the Fijian flanker. Uh, now, the flanker was concussed. Hodge gets red carded, and I was in England at the time, and one of the, the uh, commentators said, well... That's actually fair because now Fiji's lost their best player because of a reckless tackle. So uh, you can you can stand there and talk about different things. The, the unfortunate thing of the game of rugby, it, it's an international game. 
you know, we've got no control over the laws. You know, over in Europe, they, they look after the laws of the game. But it's also up to the coaches don't coach dirty play. There are, as we mentioned, it happens. But unfortunately, you know, when you're trying to promote a game, um, as I said before, these guys have got to be really quickly, they may listen, uh, you're not playing for six months, uh, go and get your tackle technique right or do something because, you know, what happens, he does, just, you know, does it again in a couple of months' time. I mean, it's, mate, it's not good for the game. David Campisi with us. Looking at the game as a whole, you know, the spectacle that was that match in Melbourne, it had everything. It was end-to-end. There were tries. There were brilliant tries. There was great defence. There was poor defence. There was controversy attached to it. There was a swing in the scoreline. There were comebacks. There were, And then a referee right at the end. The problem is that I have is that you go back to 2039-35, the game of the centre in front of 107,000 in Sydney. And remember, Jonah scored. We talked about the Jonah try. All everyone's talking about is the French referee and the decision that he made. Yeah, well, I said a couple of weeks ago, I did mention an article about how the referees are destroying the game. And, you know, if there's been a lot said about this game. It's been last Thursday and it's Wednesday. It's almost a week and we still complain about it. Yep. The game, you've got to move on in life. You know, you it happens. You had your chances. And I just saw a video there where Nick White went up to the referee and the referee's trying to explain. He said, Nick said, well, well you just lost us, but let us like up. I mean... How can a referee... I mean, you're a player. You're getting paid to play. You shouldn't have been in that position in the first place. And if the ball was kicked out like it's supposed to have been, you guys would have won. So, can blame left, right and centre. What we've got to do with the game, mate, we've got to be a very, very different aspect of the game. Everyone offside is offside at the ruck. Every single person. Yes, yes. I watched the South African-Argentine game on Sunday. And there was a, 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 a yellow card to... Um, Quaker Smith for tackling the halfback about an inch off the ground and the referee said you went high and as uh, Bobes, uh, the South African commentator said well mate looks like you have to be a mole, you're going to have to come up from underneath the ground to tackle someone these days it's just how, how can we go, where are we going to go and then you're slowing, you slow things down in slow motion the head eye tackle I said mate no one plays any sport in slow mo no. it looks really bad, you react to what you do Sometimes it doesn't work. So you can't keep on going back over and over and over. We've just got to learn from this. The law states about wasting time. In the professional era, everyone walks to the line out now. They do a lot of things that they never used to do, but because they're professional. I don't know why that changes the game. David Campisi with us. So the first half was 51 minutes, 50 seconds, um, and that uh, New Zealand had the ball... 6 minutes 36, and I think Australia had it 5.37. So, you, you, you know, you take out that 12 and a half or 13 minutes, 51 minutes is 38 minutes of doing what exactly? That's the problem rugby has, isn't it? Well, it is. And, you know, if you think about how long it takes to score a try, I, I, I mentioned 91 World Cup when I scored against New Zealand around that angle. It took four seconds. And why didn't Bernie McCartney tackle you, mate? Why didn't he tackle you? Well, I... No one knew where I was going. I had no idea where I was going either. <laughs> and I looked outside and I saw Phil Coots. I said, he's not playing he's not, yet the ball. No, he's a hooker. He no. should be back in the rucks, you yeah, know? Yeah. So, um, oh, yeah, mate. I just think it's, um, it's just one of those things that, uh, you know, Australia played um, England in the second test, in the third test in Sydney. There was 15 scrums, one minute 50 each. Yeah, Wow. Okay, that's just, yeah, that's just... So you can see there's a lot of wasting time and the players walk to the line out. Yeah. They walk here, they waste time. We've got runners on the field. I mean, mate, it's, it looks like a rugby league game. That's what's happened to our game. It looks like rugby league. Cambo, so, you know, where are the, the players that get you out of your seat? Where are the Christian Cullens? Where are the David Campeses? Where are the Jonas? Where are these guys? Where is the... Where is the um, Philippe Salah, you know, where, where are these guys that, that's what rugby is, pin your ears back you're playing for space, There's, isn't that why we watch the game, I don't know anyone that watches for a technical line out, maybe a line out coach does, the rest of us want to see back play, don't we? Yeah, well it's, it, the game used to be about attack, you know, if you think about the game when we went professional, we went straight to rugby league because that was the closest game to our game and we got all the defence coaches, now it's all about defence, it's not about attack the, the, the team who defends normally wins the game because they've actually stopped the opposition who has the ball, but there's, you know, you've got four players on the ground in the ruck of yours. They've got nobody. So you've got 11 v 15. How's 11 going to be 15? The players I like to watch are Colby, the South African 
uh, winger, the new winger for South Africa. You're looking at uh, Willie LaRue, very excitable. Uh, you look at Jordan for New Zealand. Yep. You look at Callaway for Australia. There are those individual players. Corabetti, when he gets the ball, he's not in rucks. So there are a players. Then you've got the French. You've got these players. You've got some really good players. But the problem is they're on the outside. The guys on the inside don't know how to give the outside guys space one-on-one. That's where the game's changed now. It's all about defence. It's not about attack. You know, trying to create different things now. It's all about structure, structure, structure. Just a, a random question. When you threw that pass back over your shoulder in the semi-final, did you know where the hell that was going? Or did you just... I mean, you obviously sensed he was there. Mate, do you think I'd throw the ball to nobody? <laughs> well, they accused you of that no. in 1989 and the Lions the thing, didn't they, mate? They accused you of that. Only, you only pass, you only ever pass if someone calls for the ball. I saw Timmy Horan out of the corner of my eye, but what I had to do was get Timu in a position where I wanted him and when I saw, I could see him and he called, I pass. So this weekend then, so, you know, look at that Australian side and, and I'm, going to run you, I'm going to run you through what has happened um, this year. This, this side has already lost five games this year, the Australia, your, your Australian side. You've lost to England twice, Argentina, South Africa, New Zealand. Four different opponents. However, if you'd won in Melbourne, it would be a successful season already, wouldn't it? So, 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 what, so what has to be achieved at Eden Park to make it successful? Does it, does it, does it win blanket over all of those other five losses? Uh, well, realistically, um, I was probably, I was one of the players that won there in 1986 in Ellis Park. So Eden, Eden Park, Park, sorry. Yep. So that's Eden Park. So that's, so I was there. So that's how long it's been. Um, look, a win against New Zealand, mate, any win's a good win. Dave Rennie, you know, he's probably got the worst Australian record in the professional era as Australian coach, but everyone loves him. I don't know why. We aren't winning. And I still don't know what style of rugby we're trying to play, but no one can give me an answer. But uh, look, you know, I mean, every game this year's been a win-loss, win-loss, win-loss. You know, will New Zealand turn up? You know, I mean, they they won the letters low already. Have they got that mental state which they the old All Black teams used to go out there instead of 30 used to be 60? Um, and the Wallabies obviously under a lot of pressure. I I do hope that we do well. We've got it there. We can do it. But we've got to start and finish strong. You can't just play 20 minutes or 30 minutes against the All Blacks. You've got to play 80. That's what we learned when we started to beat them. You've got to go the 80 minutes. You don't give them anything. OK, so we've got an All Black side at the moment that doesn't seem to be able to play for 80 minutes. At 31-13, did you think that the All Blacks were going to shut that game down in Melbourne and, 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 and it was over? I thought they were going to win by 60. Yeah. If that, if that was the, all, the old All Black side, they would have, they would have hammered it home. And said to the guys, listen, you think you're pretty good, mate, well, bring, keep on bringing it to us. I just don't think the All Blacks are the All Blacks that they used to be. And I've seen that in the Argentine test, you know, they, they just, the amount of mistakes, I've never seen an All Black team panic in attack like they do. And the problem is, you keep on changing your team around. What That's is the it? problem. Is I mean, it? in the old days, you are the best, you are the best All Black 15 in the country. Now you're the best 23, or someone's um, wife's giving birth, so he doesn't play. You bring someone else in, so there's there's disruptions like there never used to be, you know. And it's a, that's what I mean. It's a professional era. That's what happens in life now. David Campisi with us on the platform. You know, we've been bemoaning the coach. Well, most people have been bemoaning, bemo- be- bemoaning the coach all year. Ultimately, do you look at this all-black side and you think that this is a side full of world-class players or do you think that this is a side that is actually in that lull that we have in all-black rugby sometimes where we're not as good as we think we are? Yeah, look, it's, I just think that I saw over the last two years and I saw last year in Australia in the championship, the all-blacks said make mistakes that I've never seen them make before. The amount of missed tackles. You know, they used to be ruthless, you know. I mean, I, I played them 29 times. Bloody hell. It's you, a lot. They would never miss a tackle. Right. Well, they'd never miss, you know, and you knew. Um, and it's quite interesting. The 82 game um, at uh, Eden Park, uh, we won the second one in Wellington. Anyway, we scored within the first 50 seconds of the game. Anyway, uh, Roger Gould's coming back. Yeah, brilliant. And uh, he, said, he, said to, he said to Mark Eller, he said, Mark, oh, mate, that's great. And Mark said, yeah, that's great, let's keep it going. And Roger said, mate, I don't think that was a good idea. He said, why? I think now, he said, now the All Blacks are really pissed off. <laughs> <laughs> 29 times we you played. We end up losing by 26, I don't know what it was, but anyway, yeah. 
So sometimes it takes something to wake up the giant. Sometimes the giant doesn't wake up. So uh, I don't know. You just got to turn up and play your best, mate. A couple of quick questions before we let you go. I mean, thank you so much for your time. I mean, thank you so much for coming back on with us, too, mate. So what is no the uh, what is the answer to the time wasting that we saw in Nelspot with the South African players sitting down? We saw in the Chapel Hadley cricket a guy getting a massage for 10 minutes we've seen Serena uh, you know when she gets these injury breaks supposedly uh, we see footballers rolling around the field doing it all the time professional time wasting is a blight in sport how do you stop it do you stop it by doing what that French referee did and it's just such a, a smack in the face for everyone that says hey you are going to get penalised and harshly well I mean the thing is they normally walk to a line out anyway so what the, the law states you can't waste time so maybe, you know, the scrum's a joke. The scrum should be basically the only way to do it. The referee has either nothing to do with the scrum because the World Cup, uh, 91 World Cup, uh, scrum was 11 seconds. The ref had nothing to do with it. The two packs came together, ball went in, out we end. Simple. Um, I, oh, it's very difficult to understand why they walk to a line out. And I think the game has become so structured that that's all the players know. My son's playing at the moment, he's under 15. And uh, up in, in Queensland, they've got the red trials and they've got the coaches, they've got so much structure, the poor kids just play the structure. If there's a gap there, they don't know what to do. Right. Because the coaches don't say, there's an opportunity, if it's on, go. They just have been told. So time wasting, no walk to line at all. Once the ball goes over touch, call time out. But the problem is, you're going to be there forever. It's going to be a, a bloody a two or three hour game like uh, baseball. Do you think Roger Tuvasar Sheck should be making his debut this weekend if, if all injuries and concussion aside means there's a space for him? Who's that, sorry? Roger Tuvasar Sheck. Oh, uh, mate, oh, I'm not really sure. I just, look, mate, you've just got to um, make the, the, the common sense rule. Understand why. Okay. Should he play? Yeah. What do you think? No, I think he should play, mate. I mean, I think, you know, if they, they, you know, we've brought him over from Rugby League that, you know, he's in the All Black squad. He's been training with the All Blacks. At some stage, you've got to either back him or you don't back him, don't you? But we've spent rugby, New Zealand rugby, spent a million bucks or so to get him over here, you know, to try and sort of get some cross-code fans coming. I mean, it, you can't play NPC for the rest of his career, can he? No, but also, I mean, is he going to add value? Is he going to handle the big occasion? Yeah, we you don't know. know. And also, uh, is he going to fit into... To, you know, we've had rugby league players, mate. It's a different mentality. It's a different game. Test rugby is a very, very different animal to playing NRL or, you know, different games. But, again, you, if you guys think that he's good enough, the unfortunate thing in the modern game, in the old days, you used to go on a long rugby tour, you'd play midweek games, yeah. you'd blood all the young guys. Now there's a test match, test match, test match. In, in the championship, you're playing the four best teams in the world. Mate, there's no give and take. If you don't turn up on the day, you're going to lose. We thank you so much for your time. I've just had a text message come in here which says, um, and this is from a, an old-time journo who said, I remember interviewing David when he was a kid from Canberra on the 82 tour. I probably would have been one of the first journalists to ever interview him. He was great to interview back then. He still sounds the same. That's a lovely thing to say, isn't it, mate? Yeah, I said I'm a, a, bit, a bit more grey hair these days, mate. <laughs> <laughs> oh, look. Hey, are we going to see you back on our screens? We'd love to see you. Are you going to be working again or not? Hope so. Yeah, oh, mate, it's been, I was told uh, last year that I'm no good on TV, so <laughs> I've been basically cancelled by Rugby Australia. I can't, the guy, the only country I'm no good on TV or anything is in my own country. Oh, yeah, what a I lived joke. in South Africa for 10 years, TV. I've travelled the world, I'm on TV, but because, you know, my views, if you ask the question, I'll give it to you. Yep frankly, as I can, because I love the game. Um, you know, I got in trouble when I talked about Corabetti's tackle on the uh, South African. And I said it was a red card. His arm wasn't there, and I got a bit of trouble for that. And I've gone, we try and tell kids, you've got to put your head cheek to cheek. You've got to put your head behind someone's backside to tackle him. You never put your head in front of somebody. So we're trying to do the right thing, and then because it's a great try, commentators say nothing. Yeah. Instead of saying, kids, please exactly. don't try this at home. Yeah. You know, we've got a duty of care, but seems to go out the window because we, he made a great tackle. Well, as I said, you know, as you know, I didn't make many tackles, so I'm not an expert. <laughs> hey, what a pleasure. You've given us 20 minutes of your time. We're so grateful, mate. Thank you so much, David. Come on anytime, dude. Mate, anytime. Thank you very much. Oh, great talking to you. Brilliant. David Campisi uh, with us live.